Hey there gang, Kawaii50 here. Now I know that we have been talking about Sparking Zero for a fairly, fairly long time, especially on social media and things like that. And I've seen a lot of people wondering why they aren't working on these balance changes. You know, why aren't they making it so, you know, the lower tier characters can fight more against the higher tier characters? Why is it such an uphill battle for Chiaotzu to defeat the likes of Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta? And I feel like this means that we need to have a talk. As I'm sure you saw by the title of the video, you at the end of this video will know that Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is not and will never be balanced. And that's okay. It really is. Let's clear some stuff out of the way first. I've seen people talking online about how Sparking Zero might potentially be a quote unquote copy of the likes of games like Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles, Jujutsu Kaisen Curse Clash. Uh, let's go ahead and clear that up for the younger viewers in our audience. None of those games would exist without the OG Dragon Ball Z Budokai series. The popularity of that series is part of what led people to realize that there is a market for anime fighters out there and a market for people to want to, you know, throw their favorite characters in a series against each other and see who is going to win. Budokai Tenkaichi 3 specifically being one of the main precursors to the likes of this entire genre. Tenkaichi 3 very, very important game, why it has completely cemented itself in the hearts and minds of Dragon Ball Z and anime fans at large as a very, very good game. But let me say, part of the reasons that Dragon Ball Fighters ended up being such a popular new entry is because Tenkaichi, Budokai in general, from the bottom up, all of these anime arena fighters are never really balanced or even intended to be a competitive style game. This doesn't mean I wouldn't like to see games like this at EVO in their own category or anything like that, because I think they would give us some of the craziest, silliest, hypest matches since the likes of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 existed. But this isn't going to be the likes of Street Fighter or Tekken or anything like that. We are not going to necessarily see that deep competitive scene focused on balance and preservation and tiny little changes to the tier list that we would have seen from those other games. I don't even expect we'll see a level of balance that we saw in other 2D anime fighters that we would have seen on older platforms, the likes of Gundam Battle Assault 2, or even the hilariously referenced Dragon Ball GT Final Bout. I know there's going to be someone out there in the comments that played that and wants it mentioned, so there you go. There is your mention. But just because the game isn't designed from ground up to be competitive doesn't mean that it doesn't have at least a little bit of competitive legitimacy, and it also doesn't necessarily mean that the matches aren't going to be fun to watch. Tenkaichi, a lot of these anime fighters, Sparking Zero itself, are at their base the equivalent of smashing your action figures together on your bedroom floor, seeing who is going to win in your imaginary game. I am not saying that as a detriment. There is a deep beauty in that. And it is something that we as people really, really want to see just in general. I think the popularity of Death Battle speaks for itself. The likes that we want to see, you know, the likes of Wolverine fighting Darth Vader, for example. Could Light Yagami beat Columbo? Any of that stuff. As long as there is fiction, we are going to be making these comparative uh, questions both in and outside of universes. Do you think that if the ancient Babylonians had internet, they wouldn't be routinely arguing that their hero King Gilgamesh would be able to defeat Indian hero Karna? We argue it to this day, so there is no reason why we shouldn't assume that they would not be arguing the same thing and taking joy in the comparison. But the fact that we have these wildly scaling power sets, the fact that the game at its core is just so deeply imbalanced, is part of the fun. It's part of what makes Dragon Ball Sparking Zero so entertaining to watch. Be you watching the bigger or the smaller content creators or anybody in between, being able to see these crazy matchups come to fruition, feeling the hype of things like the Beam Clash and the Throw Clash, seeing the arena get destroyed. This was part of what was so engaging about Fighters was that spectacle. We are now just taking that and magnifying it into an arena space 
and even though it's not necessarily going to be as competitive as fighters, we are still getting that visual wow factor, that visual fun factor, and we still get to see, most importantly, a completely noted and completely apparent underdog being able to take the fight to the stronger warriors. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you are playing the likes of Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta or Vegito Blue online, you are always going to be the bad guy in every single match. There is nothing I can do to change that, and if you are fine with it, then great. If you hate being the bad guy, maybe potentially play somebody else. That is because we also always liked an underdog in all of our stories. Luke Skywalker and the Rebellion versus the Empire. The Phantom Thieves from Persona 5 versus Society. Oh no, Persona 5 mention. For a very specific, very deep example, Goku versus the likes of the Red Ribbon Army. Goku versus the likes of Frieza. Goku or Gohan versus the likes of Cell. Being able to see our characters put back into an underdog position and then find some way to go ahead and rise above the challenge, that is the core of the entertainment value. This is just societal. This is baked into our storytelling. This is probably baked at its most base level down to a lot of stories you have read or watched or played or experienced in your lifetime. But if you see the likes of a Cyberman, for example, completely destroying a hit online, despite the connotations it means actually in the show's universe and, you know, what it could mean at large, you are still in that moment seeing a weaker opponent push forward and categorically obliterate someone who by all means should have won the fight. And it is in that moment, it is in that match, it is in watching it that Sparking Zero does become quintessentially Dragon Ball. So, so what if Sparking Zero isn't balanced? So what if it's not necessarily built to be a competitive fighter? While they are going to do things that are going to be better for the life of the game, such as potentially nerfing Yajirobe's Senzu Bean to prevent timeout matches, to add more of that fun factor to it, I think they are going to be focused on the fun factor more than anything going forward. We are going to see intensely powerful warriors. We are going to see legitimate uphill battles. And that is part of the reason that the DP system has come into play when it comes to fighting these enemies. You get 15 DP, but it allows you to craft these scenarios. It allows you to think, well, yes, I know I am fighting Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Broly, and yeah, that's 15 DP. I don't know if there's a way that they would be able to, you know, if I'd even be able to win against that. But it allows you to think like, well, maybe if I build a team of like a Meta Cooler and Super Garlic Jr. and X and Y and Z character all the way down to the likes of Master Roshi and Mr. Satan, maybe those people together would potentially have a chance. Again, the equivalent of smashing our action figures together on the floor. Your giant Lego villain Emperor Palpatine, he is the strongest bad guy of the week. But you are asking yourself, even though he's super duper strong, are the likes of Harry Potter and Luke Skywalker and this one Lego police officer and fireman able to defeat Emperor Palpatine? I've always found a joy in that. I've always found, you know, some sort of mark of human spirit of humanity itself being baked into overcoming adversity and i know that i'm getting a little philosophical with that comparison but it's really the only big way i can compare it so sparking zero i will take your imbalance i will enjoy your imbalance i will relish in your imbalance and while i may be playing lower tier characters that might not necessarily be able to have an easy time defeating the bad guys roaming around online ironically in this case the super saiyan 4 gogetas and super saiyan blue vegetos when i do end up beating them when i do end up climbing that mountain it is going to give me a sense of accomplishment I wouldn't feel otherwise. And maybe for a lot of you watching this video, you will end up feeling the same. Let me know your thoughts on Sparking Zero and its overall baked in imbalance down in the comment section below. Let me know if you think there's anything they should change just to overall make the game more fun. And let me know what teams you're running. Let me know what action figures you are combining together to take on the bad guys online. 
I want to see whatever completely and utterly wacky teams that would never ever exist in the Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball anything canon. I want to see these characters come together. I want to see Cooler come together with Master Roshi. I want to see Dr. Wilo end up fighting alongside Jiren. Let me know what those wacky teams are because seeing those wacky teams climb the mountain, it's beautiful. It is beautiful and brilliant. Anyways, gang, that's it for me, Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you all in the next one.